uh, we're going to go to the last subject that we've got on the agenda today, and uh, we're going to take a look at the Bellator offering. Uh, they've just signed Chael Sonnen and Lyoto Machida, and I'm sorry if I messed up some of the titles there. It's our first time messing with the program, but uh, we're looking at Bellator here to close out. Uh, Leota versus Chael, Miguel's geriatric league in action here. How do you feel about this one? Well, it's it's more hey, this this is what this is what Bellator does, isn't it? It's, it's you know the old UFC stars they go to Bellator and they fight each other. It's it's uh, you call it the geriatric lead. It's the it's the old guys who no longer are relevant in the UFC, so they go to Bellator League. <laughs> the geriatric league simplifies it, but that that's what I you know. One championship's making moves, and you got articles in Forbes talking about, you know, this East-West duopoly and mixed martial arts between the UFC and one championship. And they're they're getting guys like uh, Demetrius Johnson, and they got guys beating um, Eddie Alvarez, and they're marketing their champions. They're selling out big stadiums, they're big arenas, and, you know, they're promoting themselves well. And, you know, here you got Bellator trying to compete with the U- UFC in their home turf, in the UFC, in, in the United States, they go to New York City here in June, and they're just, they're just. I don't like this business model. They're going to be at Madison Square Garden, and so what's the other thing? Oh, well, we need big names, so let's put Leota Machida and Chelsea Sonnen together. Well, I mean, <laughs> this is in 2011. Like, that would have been a big win, big fight eight, nine years ago. It's just not what it is anymore. And of course, I'm still interested. I mean, I but Chael Sonnen has clearly moved on with his career. He's clearly taken these fights kind of almost as gimmicks at this point. I mean, he just got ran through by an old Fedor who didn't make it a minute with Ryan Bader, and uh, you know Machida. Uh, I you know I can't even really think of what I mean. I know he's been in Bellator, but. Uh, he got one fight in under Bellator, and he's got a win. It's over Rafael Carvalho. He was on a two-fight losing streak with the UFC heading out of that. And that's the part of it I don't like. You know, it's like um, the, some of these guys know their names and their former champions, and that's what Bellator looks like. You know, when you look at it, um, and I, I, I apologize, he had a two-fight winning streak in the UFC beating Belfort and Anders. Um, and uh, before that, he had dropped three in a row, so he was two and three in his last five. And uh, just – you know, that's what you kind of remember him going out and, you know, his failed run at 205 after, you know, uh, or, I'm sorry, his failed run dropping at 185 after having the, the light heavyweight championship for a little bit. Milder was once one of the best fighters on the planet. He's clearly not anymore. Um, and, you know, Bellator is grabbing the scraps in this case. You know, they've done a good job in grabbing a couple of the elite fighters that the UFC has let go, but the UFC hasn't let too many elite guys go at the point where, you know, um, they're still useful fighters. And they haven't done actually that great a job with guys like Benson Henderson and, and uh, things like that. Rory McDonald at this point has one of their belts. Gegard Mousasi, uh, you know, has another one of their belts. Those are UFC guys that left the UFC in their prime and are still capable fighters. But most of the roster, you know, Quentin, Vanderlei, Chael, Leoto, Fedor, you know, most of the roster that's in the geriatric league is, you know, plus 40 guys that, you know, haven't given us, as you said, a highlight fight, you know, in more than half a decade. So, and this is up there with that, you know. Uh, I don't blame Machida and I don't blame Sonnen for grabbing it. Like you said, Sonnen's got a lot of business and other stuff going on, being a personality and the bad guy and stuff like that. Machida, you know, he needs he needs the fights. He, he doesn't have that. And, uh, you know, he still has his legacy. Maybe he's thinking about a run. Uh, I, I guess the fight's at middleweight. You know, are they going to do it at middleweight, light heavyweight? What, what do we know about Bellator? We know nothing. They don't tell us anything. So we'll, we'll just see them at Madison Square Garden June 14th is the day of the fight. Any predictions on this one? Um, I just, from what I've seen of them recently, I think Machito will win. And just, just judging on the style, I don't think Chell's going to be able to really impose that style on Leota Machita, but... When you look at Chell Sonnen's last five fights, when you count this, he's going to get in the ring with Machida. He fought Tito Ortiz back in 2017. He fought Vanderlei Silva back in 2017. Fought Quentin Jackson and Fedor in 2018. Now he's got to fight Leona Machida. So Ortiz, Silva, Quentin Jackson, Fedor, and Machida. And Chell Sonnen versus all of them. 
none of these guys have been supremely relevant since 2012 at the latest. I mean, so what this makes, Bell and, and most of these fights have been main or co-main events on their cards. So it makes them look like they're just 10 years behind the UFC. You know, they're getting the talent that was big in the UFC 10 years ago. And yeah, what, this, gonna, what they run into here is, is you know, there comes an aspect of these fighters are just, you know, you, you're overpaying probably. And at this point, you have to overpay because veterans are not going to take pay cuts, you know, unless they're really in a hurting circumstances for finances. Why take pay cuts and stuff and keep doing the grind and, and operating at a high level? So you come in, you take a contract. Maybe it's less than you, you made for your biggest fights and stuff like that. But it's a reasonable contract over time. Now you got guys maybe not fighting for 100%, you know? It's the Bob Sapp effect. How far off is Chael Sonnen from actually being Bob Sapp showing up for a payday and leaving, you know? I mean, other than the fact that he's just a much higher level mixed martial artist, not far, because that's what it looks like. He's just told just taking fights just to take fights. And no, uh, Chell's never been a guy, you know, if, if Chell gets caught, he'll tap out too. You know what I mean? I, I, I respect that. He lived to fight another day and the whole thing, it's not a problem. But, you know, again, we're, we're going to be asked to watch this and advertisers are going to be asked to pay for this. And they're going to take home pretty decent money for the fight. And we may get less than we got from Max Holloway and Dustin Poirier, right? Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. And you know, I mean, they're getting their money, and you know, they're 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 getting to go fight and not have to fight against some of these. I mean, it, it's I, I, maybe maybe we're wrong for complaining about this. Maybe it's not BJ Penn being thrown in there with Yair Rodriguez. So you know, may, maybe. Maybe this is exactly what's what's right for both of these guys right now is to be over out of the UFC where they're not in contention to be a serious world world championship contender and they get to fight older guys from their generation. Maybe maybe that's a great thing. I just I don't see what Bellator is gaining throwing this throwing these out there because it's it's, it, it's cheap advertising. It's cheap advertising because of their name recognition. And here's the part of it is to me really this is a young man's sport. So once older guys are doing it, there is a, 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 a taking away of it. You know, in jiu-jitsu, there are master's classes and master's uh, belts and, and competitions and things like that. But I think there comes a point where, you know, guys go to the master's because they can't cut it against the younger guys anymore. And so it's a natural progression. But the fact is, is with the name recognition, you're evoking a certain level of fighter that these guys are not anymore. But by putting them in the main event, and by giving them the paycheck and giving them the bells and whistles, you're still presenting them that way. So if 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 I if they came out and said we're going to do a UF uh, a heavyweight Masters Grand Prix and just called it what it is, over 35ers, they they would have gotten a lot more of my respect. But you can't mark you know you don't market that you can't market it as the older guy. You know what I mean? It sounds weird. You know, but that's really, that's literally what it was. And that would have been the honest way to market it because you're not going to get the balls out fighting that you, you, you get from younger men. It's just not going to happen. 